Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's give God praise in this house today. Today, this is the day that God has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. As TJ mentioned, I'm Pastor Vincent, and they also call me. Yep, that's me, and so I'm excited to see each one of you in the house, and again, welcome to you guys that are connecting with us online. I'm excited because uh, today we're getting ready to kick off a new sermon series entitled Stretch. Everybody say Stretch. Oh, man, y'all must still be cold. Okay, let's try it again. Stretch. All right, there we go. And so in order for us to get the concept of this, I'm going to ask you to get back up on your feet just real quick. And uh, for you that are online, get up out of your bed, get up off of your couch. And uh, uh, because if we're going to talk about stretching and, and what that looks like spiritually, then we want to go ahead and get that stretch in this morning. So go ahead and stretch it out. You got some loose muscles, some tight muscles rather, uh, some areas that you need to stretch out. That's it, right? Oh, man, some of y'all are grunting too much, man. You hadn't stretched in a long time. All right, you might be seated. Thank you uh, for joining in with me on that. Uh, as, I, as I thought about this series, Stretch, um, as I uh, really was focusing in on it, um, I realized that as I get older, stretching uh, become, has become a vital part of my morning routine. And some of you that are in my age group or older understand what that means, that, that you can no longer just jump out of bed, right? Um, that uh, you kind of got to ease out. And, uh, and then I go through kind of this process of, of stretching every morning um, because uh, stretching is all about uh, helping us to uh, uh, gain that flexibility, that, that bendability, uh, so that uh, we can alleviate some of that, that uh, tension, uh, those, those stiff muscles um, that uh, we have in our bodies. And, uh, and, and as I thought about it, you know, part of the reason why I stretch is I have a bad shoulder from an injury back in high school playing football. And so if I don't stretch this shoulder, um, what will happen is, is that it'll start to get so tight that it, my mobility is restricted. And so I can't reach like I, I, I want to. I can't, I can't uh, extend like I desire. If you, like me, if you had any other kind of major injuries, like uh, back in 2007, I ruptured my Achilles playing basketball. Um, and, and the reason why I, I ruptured my Achilles, can you guess why? I didn't stretch. I did not stretch. I thought I was going to jump in this pickup game with these high schoolers back when I was a youth pastor, and I didn't stretch. And so as soon as, I mean, as soon as the game started, I took a step, and their PV went down to the ground. Friends, by definition, the word stretch means to flex, to bend, to extend, to expand. And so this, this month, as we kick off 2021, I want us to make a declaration beginning today that we will become flexible, everybody say flexible, flexible, to God's will for our life. That we will become bendable to his plan for our lives so that we can extend our faith and our trust in him. Everybody say stretch. stretch. All right, we're going to make that declaration. So, so repeat after me, I want to. Become flexible to God's will, bendable to his plan, and extend my faith and trust in him. You said it, not me. Okay. Exodus chapter 14 is where we're going to kick off today. Exodus chapter 14. And we're going to look at verses 10 through 16. Exodus 14, verses 10 through 16. I'm going to be reading from the NLT uh, version. Uh, if you have it, if you have your Bibles, your iPhone, Bible apps, go ahead and look it up. But we also have it on the screen as well. If you have it, say stretch. Uh, it reads, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Were there not enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? 
We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It is better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never, you will never see again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Verse 15, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. In the King James Version, it says, stretch your hand over the sea. And so today, as we, we look at this story of Moses and the children of Israel at the Red Sea, I want to ask us this question. What is in your hand? What is in your hand? God, we bless your name today. And God, we pray uh, that uh, you would open your word up to us right now. Uh, but first, prepare our hearts and our minds and our ears to hear, to receive, to understand uh, what you have for us today as we uh, desire to stretch our faith in you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. To understand this story, we have to go back to the beginning of Moses' story. When God called Moses in Exodus chapter 3, and I believe a couple of months ago, uh, I, I preached about that story. As Moses uh, was in the wilderness, he saw the burning bush. He was attracted to that burning bush. And at that burning bush, God called Moses and told him that he wanted him to go and lead the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. If you remember uh, when we talked about uh, that a few months ago, we talked about how that Moses was was afraid and he began to make excuses. In other words, God wanted to stretch him, but Moses' initial response was, I don't want to be flexible. One of the excuses that, that Moses had, we find in Exodus chapter 4 uh, in verses 1 and 2, where Moses said, well, God, if I go, the people won't believe that you sent me. I need a sign, God. I, I, I can't go. They're not going to believe me. And it is in Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, that God responds to Moses with this question of our topic today. What is in your hand? Moses uh, responded to God. He said, a rod, a staff, uh, an, an instrument, a tool that, that every shepherd had to basically guide sheep. But God was trying to show Moses that that instrument that he thought was not, was not uh, significant, uh, was, was insignificant rather, was an instrument by which God was going to perform mighty miracles through it. And friends, if you, if you read through uh, the next few chapters of Exodus, most of the miracles uh, and the plagues uh, that, that God uh, sent to Egypt were, were as a result of God instructing Moses to take the rod that was in his hand and stretch it out. And friends, just like Moses, we too have a lot of excuses for why we can't do what God wants us to do. We are, we are, in essence, making excuses why, God, I know this is what you've called me to do. I know this is what your plan, your will for my life is, but God, I just can't do that. And, and, and God, I believe, is, is speaking to us today, and he's asking us the question, what's in your hand? And, and just like Moses, we feel that what we have is insignificant, that is, that is not enough, that, that it is not uh, uh, enough to, to complete the work that God has for us. We are looking and waiting for something new, something different, something else, somebody else to step in so that we can experience the miracles that God has for us when God is simply telling us to stretch out was in our hand. So, as we move forward to the, to the passage of Scripture today, Moses performed the miracles, the plagues. Pharaoh has decided to let the children of Israel go. In other words, Pharaoh said, I can't take it anymore. You, you, and you get out of here, right? And, and, and so, the children of Israel have exited Egypt. 
and they're excited. Can you imagine being in captivity your whole life and now you're finally free? And they're excited and they've made their way to the Red Sea. But here's the problem. At the Red Sea, a new crisis arose. Exodus 14 and 10 says it. As Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and they panicked. Here's the first thing I want us to consider this morning. Don't get caught up in the crisis. Don't get caught up in the crisis. Now, we could talk about crisis, right? Right? We, we could talk about, we, we dealt with a lot of crisis over 2020. And somebody thought as soon as uh, December 31st it, at, at, at 11.59, when, as soon as that, that one minute ticked over and it was going to be 12 o'clock January 1st, we thought all the crisis was going to be over, didn't we? Don't act like I was the only one that was thinking that, right? right? We, we just thought it was all going to go away. But friends, the crisis of 2020 and the crisis is still today. We're still dealing with the crisis, right? COVID. If we didn't, if we thought it was over, we got a nice reminder this week that we still are dealing with division, right? Still are dealing with crisis, a a economic crisis, unemployment, uh, underemployment, divorce rates are higher than they've ever been uh, during this period of time. We're dealing with crisis. And, and friends, those are the crises that we know about. But, but friends, I, I, I want to believe this morning that some of us are dealing with our own personal crisis. Yeah. Own personal crisis. Oh, we, oh we, we had a good time celebrating on New Year's Eve. But when we woke up the next day, we panicked because what? There was still a crisis. Friends, understand this. Crisis will come. Tell your neighbor, crisis will come. They didn't believe you. Tell them again. It's going to come. It's going to come. There's no way to avoid crisis. Crisis will come, but the response to the crisis is what matters. How we respond to it is what matters. Case in point. The children of Israel see Pharaoh coming, they panic, and then they do something that we all do when we find ourselves in crisis. They start to blame and complain. Oh, come on. I, I know I can't be the only one. When crisis comes, starts to blame and complain. Look at what they do in, in verse number 11. They say to Moses, why did you bring us out here? Right? Now, if I remember correctly, I don't remember Moses forcing anybody to leave Egypt, right? But, but the response was, why did you? Come on, when crisis come, we want to blame our spouse, don't we? Blame our friends. It blamed uh, the government. We want to blame anybody else other than us, right? Because it could not be possible that the crisis came because of anything we did. Friends, we were so quick to want to blame others for the crisis. And get this, when the crisis come, and the first thing we want to do is start to complain. Now, I, I have to, you know, the, the old saying says, if you can't say amen, say ouch. I have to say ouch, right? Because I'm a, I'm, I'm a complainer, Joy. Don't, don't amen that. Don't amen that, right? I find myself quickly when, when things are not going my way, they're just starting to go through the laundry list of complaints. See, I knew this wasn't going to work. See, if, if, I should never did this in the first place. Why is this? In, and where are my wide people? Why does this happen to me? Come on. Why is this happening to me? I've been studying my Bible. I'm trying to be a good pastor. God, 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 why, 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 why? And I began to complain. But, friends, here's the problem. When crisis comes and you start to focus on blaming and complaining, you will forget what God has already done in your life. The children of Israel had forgotten that God had just freed them out of Egypt. They literally had just walked out. Friends, isn't it interesting when God gives a blessing to us and then the next thing, uh, the next day of crisis come, how quickly we forget what God has already done? In other words, if God was good enough to get them out of Egypt, don't you think God was good enough to handle Pharaoh by the Red Sea? We forget. Here's what I want us to focus on. Stop focusing on the crisis because nothing happens by chance. You are not, let me say it, you are not in the current situation that you are in by chance. It is all a part of a plan that is designed to work together for your good. 
Yeah, I think somebody should say amen to that. Amen. It's, it's, it's designed to work together for your good. But here's the problem. It will never work. You will never see the miracles that you desire as long as you complain and as long as you blame. Because when you pl- complain and you blame, you will not start seeing what God wants to do in your life. The children of Israel had just experienced miracle. They find themselves by the Red Sea, and now they're complaining because of the crisis. But in Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, it's interesting that it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Now, remember, the people are complaining. They say, Moses, why did you bring us out here? Why did you do this to us? Why did you uh, uh, drag us out of Egypt, out here in the wilderness? Didn't we tell you, Moses, that that this was going to happen, right? God does not address the people, but he addresses Moses. And look at what he says. He says, Moses, why are you crying out to me? Now, here's the interesting thing. In all the times I've read this, I've never paid attention to the fact that there's no verse in here that talks about Moses crying. I think because Moses wrote Exodus, he might have let that part out for his own ego's sake, right? He, he didn't want us to know that, right? But, but, but in my imagination, what I think happened is the people start complaining, the people start crying, and, 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 and Moses in, in, in verse number, I think it was 14, you know, Moses tries to do the right leader thing. He says, don't be afraid, uh, uh, just stand still, God's going to deliver you. And I think as soon as he did that, like most of us leaders, he turned around and said, God, what are we doing? What are you going to do? God, why did you bring us out here? I told you I didn't want to do this. <laughs> Come on, isn't that true? Right? Come on, parents. Don't sometimes the crisis is happening and you're telling your kids it's going to be all right and you go in the bedroom, close your door, like, I don't know how we're going to get through this. <laughs> right? I believe that that's what, what Moses was, was, was dealing with. But look at God's response to him. He says, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Here it is, verse 16. Pick up your staff and stretch it. Here's my next point. Don't get caught up in the crisis. See what you already have. The people presented the crisis. It was obvious Moses was looking for a solution in the wrong places. God had to remind Moses of what he already had, and command him to use it. In other words, God said, Moses, the same staff, the same rod that was good enough in Egypt is good enough at the Red Sea. He had to get Moses to see what it is that he had. We uh, decided to buy a new couch about a month ago. And uh, and so as part of getting a new couch, um, we gave away our old couch, right? And so and so, unbeknownst to myself, I thought the couch that we were was, was getting was was the couch that Joy really wanted. Well, it wasn't really the couch that she wanted. She was just hoping that that couch would work because the couch that she really wanted was going to take a long time for it to come, and she wasn't sure that we wanted to wait that long. And so, long story short, the couch that, that, that we got, she really didn't want that couch. And, and so, we ended up sending that couch back, and, so the, and, the, and we ended up getting the couch that she really wanted, that we're going to have to wait like a couple months before it comes. So, so, as a result of that, guess what? We don't have no couch, right? <laughs> right? We don't have no couch. And, and, and so... And so Joy, she asked, she's like, well, what are we going to do for a couple months? We don't have no couch, you know, to sit on. And, 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 so, uh, and so I decided to, I, I looked around the house and I said, well, you know, we have these chairs, the chairs that are in our bedrooms and, and, and in our bedroom and, and uh, they match and, and there's another one that matches in the, in the entryway area. We already had a couple of chairs already uh, where the couch was. So I, I took the chairs from all of these rooms and, and I brought them into, into the living area and I set them up and, and set little ottomans up and put the little pillows out and, 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 and I set it all up and I told her to come in to see what I had done. And, and, and basically, in, in lieu of having a couch, now we still have a seating area. In other words, what I did was I looked around to see what we had, and I put it to use. 
we getting what I'm saying this morning? Moses and the people were looking for solutions everywhere else, but God was saying, Moses, the solution is in your hand. I've already given you everything you need. All you need to do is take it and stretch it. Friends, let me ask you, let me say this to, you, to us this morning. There are some things that I believe that God has given all of us in 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020 that we have been looking past because we didn't think that they were the things that we needed to get us to where God wanted us to go. And friends, some of us, even right now, are still looking past. We're entering 2021, and we're still looking past those things. Remember those blessings that God gave us but that now we despise and that we've labeled them as not being enough? Remember that job that you had to have, now you hate? You remember that house you prayed for, but now it's too small? Remember those clothes that, that, that you was like, if I could only just get my swag like that, I'd be good, but now you feel like they're out of style? You remember, the, you remember the income that you were saying, man, if I could only just make that amount, everything would be all right, and now it's not enough? Come on, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. Re remember that relationship you had to be in? We just going to leave that one right there, right? We're going to leave it right there, right, right, right? You, you remember the church that you had to be a part of because this is the place for me, but now all of a sudden somebody made you mad and you don't want to come back? Ouch. <laughs> right? Remember all the things that, that God blessed us with that now we have labeled as not being enough. And now what we find ourselves doing is we're looking around trying to find something else, something different, something that we think is better. And God wants to use what we have for the current situation that we're in. You got to see what you already have. Quit despising what you got because the very thing that you have is what God wants to use to get you to where he wants you to be. So God tells Moses, Moses, stretch out your rod. Stretch it out. Quit crying. Amen. That's a, that's, that's a message all in itself to somebody. Quit crying. Get up. Take what you got and use it. Let me say it again. Quit crying, get up, take what you got, and use it. It's interesting. God says, tell the people to move forward. As long as you're crying, guess what? You ain't going nowhere. God says, quit crying, get up, take what you got, and use it. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. We didn't read this scripture, but here it is on the screen. Look at what it says. Then Moses raised, in the old King James it says, stretched his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Friends, the rod got them out of Egypt. The same rod would get them across the Red Sea. Here's my third point. God wants to work with what you have. Throughout biblical history, God, time after time after time after time again, used men who we would say are not significant. Use people who we would say don't have the right skill set. But God used them with what they had, right? God reminded Moses that he had already had what he needed, and he just simply told him to use it. Here's the thing. But in verse 21, it was up to Moses to actually do it. How often is God telling us to use what we got? I've already given you everything you need. You... you just just have the faith to, to stretch what you got, and, and I'll do the miracle. But how often has God told us that, that we're like, nope, can't do it. I don't believe you, God. I don't know. It's, just, it's not good enough, God. I need more. I need more. 
I need something else. Friends, the, the significant part here was that it was still up to Moses to take it and stretch it. The miracle happened because of Moses' faith to, to yield to the command of God and use what he had. Friends, we're often looking for more money, more education, more support, and we're always doubting God's ability to work with what we have and to take our little and make it into something more than enough for us. Here's what I want you to see this morning. God's not trying to change who you are. God just simply wants to use who you are just the way you are. We think that we got to change who we are. We think that we got to change who everybody else is too, don't we? But God is saying, I just simply want to use you just the way you are. I just simply want to use what I've given you. We're going to say, well, I, I, you know, we, some of us like Moses. I would speak, but I'm not a good speaker. God said, I didn't ask you whether he was a good speaker. I just said, speak. I would sing. I know this gets a little dicey, right? Praise and worship team probably looking at me like, whoa, 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 PV. Whoa, 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 whoa. I would sing, but I don't think that I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good singer. But if God calls you to sing, guess what? He's giving you a voice to do it. I'll never forget, Joy, Joy will tell you today. She'll say, if you ask Joy if she's a singer, what will you say, Joy? If I ask you if you're a singer? She's not a singer. See, I said, it, after, after how long we've been doing this, six years, she still won't accept that she's a singer, right? I, I remember when, when we first started, I gave her the option of saying, look, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to lead something. So it's going to either have to be children or worship. I already knew the answer to that, right? Because um, I know Joy, right? <laughs> that's, that's why she's leading worship. But, but, but she always felt like, even way back then, she wasn't a good singer. When I first met her, I would, I, I would hear her sing in the car, and I'm like, Joy, you have a great voice. No, I don't. It was one experience that Joy had in, in high school. I'm not going to tell her story. I'll let her have it. That made and convinced her that she was not a good singer. Friends, I wonder if there's an experience, a crisis that has happened in your life that made you believe that what God has given you is not good enough and that that's not your ability, your talent that he wants to use through you for his kingdom. Use what you got. Friends, I've talked to many of you about God's calling on your life. Many of you in that conversation will say, I need something else to do it. Something. Time. Maybe it's just not the right time, PB. I, I just need more time. But friends, God's calling you to use what you have. And the only thing that's missing is your willingness to stretch it out. Here's the thing. It's time to take what God has placed in your hand, your identity, your influence, your income, your creativity, your ideas, your passions, your talents, your gifts, whatever it is, it's time for you to take what's in your hand and stretch it out. Friends, there, there was no power in the rod. It was just a stab. It was just a stick. There was no power in the rod. The power was in Moses' faith that God could use the rod in a miraculous way if he would be willing to stretch it out. For instance, there's really no power in, in my abilities. Like, whatever I think my gifts and my abilities are, there's really no power in it, right? No matter how good I think they are, there's really no power in it. The power comes that when I use what I have as God has called me and I'm willing to trust him enough to stretch it out, to move by faith in God and, and put what I have to use to extend it out, to, to let go of what others are thinking or other people's opinions or expectations, to, to let other people know and see what God has called me to do, to stop comparing myself to someone else because that's where we get in trouble. Oh, I can't do I mean, you know, look how they dress. 
Look how, look how they sing. Look how they speak. Look how we all get into the comparison game. But, but to, to stop comparing ourselves to someone else, to, to stop worrying whether or not it's enough, to, to be flexible and to be bendable to his will and trust that if God gave it to me, then God gave it to me to use for my good and the good of others. The band can come. Many of us have been praying for, for years, year after year. We've been praying for the, for the miracle to come. Praying for the miracle to come, the breakthrough. The, we've been praying for, for the change. We've been praying to get out of the crisis that seems to be going over and over again in our lives. Can I let you in on a secret? The miracle, the change, the breakthrough will only come when we stretch our faith to use what God has given us. Let me ask you this question this morning. This is for you to think. What's in your hand? What has God given you that's laying dormant in your life? What is God giving us as a, as a church? You know, one thing that COVID taught me, and, and, and I knew it, but but sometimes it's hard to, to, to accept it is that everything we need is at Cross Church. Now, and you know, there's people that bring additional gifts. But, but for the season, the situation that we're in, God has placed people within the church to meet the need of the church. That we have everything we have. But maybe it's because we're not using what's in our hand. Do you see what's in your hand? Or have you been looking somewhere else? Maybe you've been too focused on the crisis that you can't see what God's given you. Are you, are you, are you using it? Or are you simply just holding on to it? Have you, have you tried to just stretch it out? Are you afraid that it's not adequate enough? Afraid of what other people will think, other people will say, or you maybe are just afraid that God won't respond to you? Friends, I want to encourage you today. As we take these steps over the next few weeks through this series called Stretch, it's time to stretch beyond the limitations that we've set on our own minds and on our own lives and believe God by faith that if he gave it to me that if I will simply stretch and trust him that he will do what it is he promised to do in my life everyone stand to your feet so as we close today maybe your stretch today is to to take a faith step into relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe you, you, your heart has been desiring to enter into relationship, but you were scared, you were holding yourself back, you, you weren't sure, but God is calling you and he's saying, I want to have a relationship with you. Well, your stretch today is to take that step to say, God, I want to accept Jesus into my life. Maybe your stretch is, is to say that, that I'm ready to use what it is that God has called me to use that's in my hand. Oh, I've been knowing it. I've been avoiding it. I've been running. I've been ignoring it. I've been looking for something else, but I can't